All right, it's time for the phase three Kamui Ski Links expansion. I'm going to follow the same format as usual. I'm going to start by looking at things like aspect and slope gradient to get a sense of where it would be good to expand. Next, I will draw new lifts, following that with drawing the new runs, and then removing trees using a polygon so it looks like there are actual runs on the slopes. And then I'll have some concluding remarks. All right, so to get started, let's look at FatMap. I've loaded FatMap and I already have the aspect information. Here's the main ski area. And I've already expanded over into this area and onto the back side down to here. So all of this is skiable and down to here. So all of this is skiable. I mentioned last time, actually I mentioned in the first video that I would be interested in expanding all the way down to the bottom of this valley and creating a new base area. Right now there's a lift that finishes down here and it would be a gradual slope down to the new base area. It makes a lot of sense. And I could expand up to this peak, which would mean a lot of generally northerly aspects. I would also be interested in expanding up to this peak, opening up much of this terrain. So that's the idea. This is going to be a large expansion. Let's get a quick look at the gradient back here. If you recall, the steepest skiing that I found is on the back side of Kamui Ski Links. I've designated some tree runs here. So this is pretty steep. This expansion area is not going to be very steep. It's going to be pretty typical of Kamui Ski Links. So the new base area would be down here. And then all of these slopes. So getting into maybe 25 degrees. A lot of these are a little bit flatter. There's some steep area at the top of this peak, and I think I'll build a new chairlift to the top of that. So just a little steep section and some little steep areas here and there. Yeah, so those are, those are the main considerations. I'm not going to look at snowforecast.com. At this point, if you've watched the phase one and phase two videos, you have a good sense of where the snow is going to be good based on elevation. I'm going to switch over to Google Earth. And this is where I left off last time. I'm going to open up this window and just turn everything on. So this is what I've already done. Phase one involved adding this lift and this lift. And then phase two added this lift and then this lift all the way over here. I'm going to expand up into this valley. Now there's a slight issue. I don't think I'm going to cross this line, but this doesn't look good visually. This is the terrain imagery I've been using in the previous videos, and I don't think it works very well just because of this. So let me find a different one. I like this one. There's a slight problem the the snow is a bit it's a little bit grayer the runs i've drawn are quite white so i'm going to adjust the color of my runs the polygons for my runs and i think it's good enough yeah do the squint test it, it blends okay and now I have contiguous satellite imagery up this valley. So I will start by adding some new chairs. And roughly they're going to go from the base area to somewhere up here. 
and also from down there to somewhere up there. I'm going to adjust these. OK, so this would be a beginner lift, which provides access to these two upper lifts on the back side from phases one and two. And it starts at 224 meters and goes up to 402 meters. So that's about 180 meters, which is fine for a beginner lift. And then this other one, so note that this one starts at 220. This other lift starts at 216, so it's a little bit lower. And I think it makes sense to put the lift down here for a couple reasons. One, if you're skiing from this area, you can follow this valley down and then traverse over, right? And the day lodge down here would probably be somewhere around here. So from the day lodge, you could ski down to this lift, around 230 meters, down to 216 meters. It's quite flat, but it's just a traverse. And then by putting the bottom of the lift down here, there's relatively easy access by traversing from this side. So from the bottom of this valley, roughly about here, not all the way down, but from about here, I think it would be a nice traverse back to this lift. So you could ski everything over here, come down this valley to here, and cut across. And this goes from 216 to 632. So that's a little over 400, almost 420. That's a decent amount of vertical rise. And then there's one more chair that I would add from down here to up there. So we're looking at 280 thereabout the top of here which goes to around 660 so is that about 380 meters 380 meters which isn't that much but it's not terrible so I think these are the three lifts I'm going to add which will open up all of this terrain Yeah. Now it's time to draw some runs. I forgot one thing. I need to add phase three under the runs. And then I need to add phase three under the lifts. There, all better. So the phase three lifts are in. Now I'm going to start adding some phase three runs. One thing that I want to do is make sure from the top of this lift, it'll just be a beginner lift, but it's also kind of a, a transport to get to these other two lifts. So I want to make sure there's a good enough slope to get to either of these. And then I also want to make sure there's a nice slope from the top of this lift back down to here. So from this lift, it's easy to access this uh, phase one lift to the top. So I'm going to work on that. Someone came to visit. Yep. Say hi to everyone, Pinto. Go somewhere else. Uh, that's my cat.
All right, I think that's it for the general run layout. So from the top of this chair, there will be some beginner runs down. From the top of this lift, you can access either of these other lifts from phases one and two. From this lift, it's possible to access the phase one lift or ski back down to the bottom. From this lift, it's possible to, of course, ski everything up here, but then also get all the way back down to the base area. What I'm going to do now is draw the run colors. I'll put this in time lapse. I know this traverse is not an intermediate run, but again, I don't want beginners to get the idea to go down to this lift, because from the top of this lift, there's nothing easy. Okay, that's it for the runs and the colors. Now it is time for some tree removal. This one is going to be quite substantial. Should be a nice long time lapse. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I got a bit overzealous there. Some of these are supposed to be tree runs. Gotta put the trees back. That just about does it. <clears throat> I'm going to turn off the run colors and turn off the chair lifts. And let's have a look. I think this works. This is it. So I'll turn the lifts back on. And yeah, let's give this a quick overview. 
these are the original lifts. And currently there's a lift that's here, which I replaced in phase two with this lift. All the other lifts are new. From the top of the gondola, if you start down at the current base, from the top of the gondola, it's possible to reach every chairlift except this one. Something I could do, I thought about this before recording, is building a traverse that goes all the way over to here and then continues over to here. So it would be possible to get from the top of the gondola to this lift, but I don't like having too many cat tracks cutting across runs. It creates a little bit of a jump. And I know youngsters are into that kind of thing, but, but not everyone's a youngster. From this base area, from this lift, it's possible to access these three other lifts over here. From this lift, it's possible to access all the other lifts. From this lift, of course, it's possible to access either of these lifts. So I think for the most part, to get between any two points on this mountain takes only two rides, two chairlift rides. And I think that's nice. So no matter which base you start on, you can get to wherever on the mountain you like. Now, I've had some other ideas. For example, adding a run that cuts through here. Just making this run connect down to here. I might do that. I also thought about adding another beginner lift here and having perhaps a ski village up on the slopes here. So there would be three bases. I'll think about that. I, I might do that in another video. Otherwise, this is it. I'm going to turn all the run colors back on. Oh, just, just look at this. So here's the existing ski area. Here's phase one, phase two, and phase three. That adds quite a lot of terrain, a lot of intermediate, advanced, and expert runs. I think most of these would be easy intermediate runs. Yeah, that's it. So that is the end of phase three and the end of the major build out of Kamui Ski Links. I might do a little bit of touch up, might add an extra run here and there, but this is pretty much it. Let me know what you thought, if there are other things you would have done with this mountain and expansion. Let me know if there's another mountain you would like me to tackle. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.